Okay, I got it. Okay, guys, interesting way to start the video, but what's good, Gray Gang? We got an MTB Pro Box. Now, let me just let you know, okay? Now, let me see here. I've attempted one, maybe two MTB Slams, and this last one took me four days, and I still didn't complete the challenge. But, of course, I had excuses. Last time's excuse was that I forgot the jerk bait at the first day's location. However, by the last day, I didn't even get anywhere near to actually, you know, completing the challenge anyway. But that doesn't matter. We're going to sit right here, and we're going to crack open this thing, and hopefully, you know, like, I can complete the challenge for once. But anyways, here we go. MTB Pro Box. First thing we see, these little VNM critter baits or creature baits or whatever you want to call them. I can put them on the back of a jig or just go standard Texas rig with those. Next thing, some treble hooks. We may end up putting some treble hooks on some of these hard baits in here. Next thing is this sledgehammer swim jig right there. We'll definitely be giving that right there a try. And then, oh dang. That ain't gonna be easy. They gave me this giant, like, four or five inch swim bait. Now, I actually do own another live target swim bait. That one is eight inches long, and the reason I bought it... Well, guys, it was pretty, and it was on sale. Diving on into the box, I see the word popper. That's always good news. A little lunker hunt popper. I believe if it comes down to a pinch, we can get one on this thing. Next right here is this little catch coat jerk bait. Looks like MTB may be making their own baits now, but... You know, I don't know. I'm just a boy with a dream. But yeah, got a nice little suspending jerk bait right there. It is turning into fall, and got suspending jerk baits that look like shad, just like that one. Fire. And then the last thing I see in the box is this lunker hunt frog. Now, some of you may think I'm crazy, but these things really come in handy whenever the leaves start falling off the tree. Let's say you fish a pond that's, you know, back in the woods. Whenever all the leaves fall down, it's basically making like a vegetation mat, except out of leaves. I've had people ask me, how do you fish when there's so many leaves on the water? Only thing I really told them is like, I, I mean, I guess you can use a frog. Basically, when that happens, you can either get a frog or something that's heavy enough to punch through the leaves. I like to go with a frog because well, I'm not good at punching yet. But besides that, that's all the stuff we get to use. Let's head out there. First, we're actually going to be fishing two different ponds. Since that swim bait's not going to be easy to catch fish on, I'm first starting off at a pond that doesn't have many fish, but those fish are big. And for some reason, it's like clockwork with a barometric pressure, and I ain't checked it today. Well, here we go. First thing we're going to be using is this stinking giant swim bait. And guys, some of y'all may be thinking that no fish whatsoever is going to this. But actually, a two-pound fish will have no problem eating this. The only reason I'm worried about it is, well, because in these ponds, they ain't many two-pound fish. But we're going to try it anyway. I can tell y'all right now, in this pond, there's some six-pounders. The only problem, well, I've just never caught them before. They're definitely here, though. Even got a few smallmouth in this pond, actually. Doesn't make much sense, but... Trust me. Oh, hey. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my gosh. I just got a bite. I just got a bite on this thing. Are you kidding me? I just got a bite. Wow. That's crazy. Just a standard backlash, people. Guys, I ain't even kidding. I'm not casting a bait caster in three months. I've not been fishing it. Oh, my gosh. Bro, I did not. I just caught a fish. Oh, my goodness. I just caught a fish, guys. I just caught a fish. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is the funniest thing I've ever saw in my life. He is not even two pounds. He's like 10 cents. Bro, he's a chunker too. I'm not gonna lie, this guy's a chunker for as big as he is. I just think it's so funny how just a second ago I said even a two pounder will eat it. Well guys, actually a one pounder will eat it. Like guys, this fish may break 12 inches. Maybe. I'm gonna get this guy back in the water there. Thanks for writing, little guy, because... I honestly just got the hardest bait out of the way. When he bit that thing, I honestly thought I had like a five pounder. The reason I thought that is because rarely you'll catch a small fish on that thing. However, this is a rare case and that fish is very, very brave. To be completely honest, guys, I don't know what that bass was thinking. He tried to eat a shad and this is a pond. Like, shad don't live in ponds. But then again, smallmouth don't either. And there's smallmouth in here. Since I got the hardest bait out of the way, what are we gonna fish with next, guys? Uh, I really didn't think about this. But anyways, let's see what we got. Honestly, guys, I mean, I think I'm gonna go with this swim jig right here. I mean, I don't really have any trailers in here. That's why. But honestly, guys, you don't have to have a matching trailer. A lot of times, a different colored trailer like these watermelon is actually better than a matching trailer and so that's exactly what we're going to try here today now i've got the swim jig tied on and i've actually uh bit this trailer down a little bit just because i don't want it sticking way off but what i'm going to do is instead of having the legs come out like this i'm actually going to turn it this way to where their legs are like this and it'll sort of resemble you know the way that a bluegill or shad moves their tail like this so instead of having the tails like this and letting them flap like a crawdad i'm actually turning them like this and letting them flap as if you know it's a tail fin i'm just going to get it right here thread it right through the middle of it thread it up on there push it up there on the weed guard and this one actually has a hole right there in the keeper what's that's for and it actually came with them over here in the packet but i'm not going to use them they actually give you a toothpick so that you can stab it through the plastic through the hole on the keeper and back through the plastic that way your plastic will not come off however today i'm not exactly worried about my trailer coming off so i'm just going to leave that part out but anyways here we go with the mismatched 
swim jig and just a little fun fact i don't know if y'all care about this but the wind is blowing and a lot of times wind is your friend especially on wind blown banks a lot of people think that the wind actually blows the shad to one side well not exactly what it actually does is blow all the zooplankton and fish food basically over to one side and then just because that's how they roll the shad follow and just because that's how the bass roll the bass follow the shad one of my favorite things about a swim jig that well you just don't get necessarily with like a spinner bait or like a chatter bait is whenever you come up to like just straight up juice see spots you can just pitch it in there because it is still a jig just because it's swim jig you can still pitch it into heavy cover and you know work it pretty efficiently and let's say you know where a brick pile is like i do right now you don't have to swim it through you can always just throw it over there let it sink to the bottom and act like it's just a normal jig so like i just said i know there's a brick pile right there and i just caught a fish oh my okay never mind i got a bite let's just say that but anyways like i just said i know there's a brick pile right there and instead of going to my tackle box and you know switching from a spinner bait to a jig i can go from a swim jig to a normal jig and the only difference is i just let it sit there for a second while i'm sitting here working this brick pile i'll just go ahead and let y'all know something if you want your first mystery tackle box i do have a promo code this is for you guys guys it gets you ten dollars off your first box the promo code is right here it's gray gang however if you want to wait till the end of the video the link is down there also that way you can just go well you know straight there however if you're not exactly sure if you want a mystery tackle box or not go ahead and finish this video and the option's always yours later now guys what i'm about to do may or may not make sense to you so if y'all are loyal gray gangsters you will know that this pond has catfish and bluegill that i feed semi-regular well, I got some more bread right here, and I'm actually going to start a feeding frenzy. Now, even though I am tarting bass today, and the bass will not eat this, I'm still creating a feeding frenzy. Because think about it. Earlier in the video, what did I say the bass care about? And if I can get the bait fish up here having a feeding frenzy, then that's going to start something with the bass. And the bass will end up right there under all that bread. There they go. They're already eating it. They're already eating it. The bluegill's already eating. Whenever the bluegill start chomping, start splashing water everywhere, the bass is like... What's that? And then they go over there and then they start munching on the bluegill. Now I've never caught this on camera, but with my two eyes before, whenever I'd feed them, I'd look around and they'd be like just big old bass cruising around and under the school of bluegill that's been feeding on the bread. So hopefully this is going to turn into a bluegill feeding frenzy, which will in turn, oh my goodness, that just scared me to death. But in turn, we'll start a bass feeding frenzy. And the more bluegill we can get to this exact spot, the better chance I have of swimming my jig right under them and catching a big old bass. The reason I'm chunking it up in the really small pieces is so that the catfish won't come up and, you know, eat like half a piece of bread at a time. If the catfish are going to eat this, I'm at least going to make them work for it. Here in no time, the bluegill will be swarming this stuff. There we go. Now let's get the swim jig and start swimming it around. I'm going to swim the jig under the school of bluegill, out on the edges, out away from it. I'm going to swim it all around it, and hopefully one of the big bass will come up and snag it. Guys, call me crazy, but I'm actually going to put on this popper and see if these catfish may think it's a piece of bread. It's a pretty far-fetched plan. However, that catfish did just look at my jig like he wanted to eat it. You're kidding. No, I just casted my bait off. There's no way I just burn it. How did that happen? My knots just aren't tying today. Well, guys, like I said, this pond isn't necessarily known for, like, catching a bunch of fish. We caught one fish here today, and that was amazing. But besides that one fish, we're going to pack up our MTB Pro Box and head on over to the next pond. So now we're at this pond. I've actually switched from my bait caster back to my spinner reel, simply because a lot of the baits in the box is actually pretty light baits, and they would be really hard to cast on a bait caster. The bait I'm going to start with is this little, well fire tiger looking outfit popper but anyways it seems like it's a good day and we're gonna get out here and well yeah we're just gonna try to catch so one. anyways here we go we're just gonna start throwing the popper i like to throw my poppers you know just well random places you know right under trees right beside bushes right beside any kind of structure in the water and just pop it along i like this popper you can walk it good and everything it just it's a good little popper i can tell you that it's a good little popper for sure there he is oh dang that's a good one that's a good one there oh my goodness okay he's decent he's not a giant but like i said guys this this rod right here it's a popper machine and it can handle them perfect it's a good light action it's just good enough to where it can set the hooks but it's light enough to where the hooks will stay in it like almost no matter what i rarely rarely lose fish on this rod but there we go for the little popper next we're actually going to switch it up and go to that little suspending jerk bait now, like i said it's getting to be fall especially in the fall feed up where the bass feed as heavily as possible so that they can gain some fat for the winter but anyways let's go get that jerk bait on dang that looks crispy okay but anyways guys i have a feeling this won't take me long to catch a bass on i mean oh gosh that looks a bass is gonna eat this for sure oh there's one. Oh dang i was even on my phone 
at Kendall Gray one on Instagram. Bro, I think I got, I got a catfish. I've got a catfish on a stinking jerk bait. Guys, like that don't even make sense right here. But I just caught a catfish on a jerk bait. I'm not gonna get mad, but you know, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. And at that point, my jerk bait was just sitting completely still and I wasn't jerking it at all. Cause you know, I was on Instagram at Kendall Gray one. Always plug my friends, always plug. And uh, he's hooked up pretty good. So I'm gonna have to go down and get this. Okay, guy. I got him. So here's what just happened. I just caught this massive catfish on this jerk bait. I'm not gonna count this as a catch though. I'm at least trying to get all bass. However, that just goes to show that catfish will feed on live bait fish just as much as bass will. Okay, now let's try to get a green fish. Dang it. Okay, well, I broke that one off. Well, I just lost that jerk bait, which was doing excellent but anyways i mean hey it's getting dark out here if you would want a mystery tackle box i would highly suggest it for any level of fishermen use this promo code right here and get ten dollars off your first box you can try the first box if you don't like it that's okay just cancel however if you do like it just keep it going just keep getting them come out here like i did today and try to catch a bass on each of the lures in the box it's really fun and to be honest guys it's really challenging too i've never completed one and uh well by the way it's looking i probably won't ever complete one but Besides that, go down, link in the description. I'll see y'all later, Gray Gangster. Bye. If you're not part of the Gray Gang, go ahead and subscribe by hitting the button on the top right and feel free to watch some of my past videos on the left. As always, favorite squad, post it up down low. If you want some of this sweet merch, head on over to kennelgray1.com or the link in the description. But besides that, I'll catch you later in tomorrow's video.